You know, it takes a lot of courage to come out and do this. I mean, you've already been through more than any of us could ever imagine. And with such fresh wounds, I'd never be able to share my story this soon. I know this is your idea, and it needs to get out there, but if you need more time, that's okay. All right, well, if you're ready, we'll begin. Hello, thanks for participating in this interview. I'd like to start out with some light and easy questions, then we'll make our way to the tougher ones. Sound good? All right, first off, who were you? Who was Matthew King? Hmm, who was I? A friend, a family member, a person that was so excited to be in such a cool and fascinating world, a person that loved building communities and couldn't help but spend time with other people, an adventurer, a person who accepted others no matter their identities, especially those who faced hardships of exclusion, someone that loved to learn and have deep conversations in order to understand others' perspectives, Um, someone with endless energy that could play a million sports in one day, a poet, a philosopher, an activist, Someone who planned to travel to all seven continents. I was a multifaceted person that was interested in so much it was ridiculous. Um, But also, just a normal ass dude that was always trying to grow. For all those people out there right now, trying to figure out this crazy time with you at the center of it, how would you like them to be remembering you? Hmm. Um, I'd like them to remember that I was an entire story, not just the ending. That I had gone on an entire grand journey that's that's end came too soon. I want everyone to remember me for all the different sections of my life. To remember when I was a shy little kid that was afraid to speak to any stranger To remember when my friends and I spent our summers riding bikes around the neighborhood and scraping together what little money we had to sit on the street curb and eat a $5 hot and ready pizza. Um, Remember when I awkwardly forgot the words to my own speech on stage in Chicago. When I emceed my high school graduation and professed my deepest life lessons and truths um, for MLK Day at CMU. I want them to remember my dad introducing me to camping through running a long extension cord to a tent in the backyard so we could watch TV in nature. (laughs) Then when Mr. Dave and Teresa took me all around the state backcountry wilderness camping with no TVs, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, When I drive around the nation exploring every mountain, forest, ocean, cave, and any other natural feature I could possibly get to, and most recently for helping out in the community with the scholarship and stuff. Um, I want people to remember all of me, not just the ending, because I was a full person, just like any of y'all that are still walking around there today. What were you planning to do with the rest of your life? Honestly, I don't even know. I was just so excited for all that there was to get into. I was planning to continue my poetry and writings, maybe even make a book out of them one day. I was hoping to build more programs and reach further out with everybody's scholarship fund. I really worked hard to stay physically and mentally healthy so I could get to 100 years old and be playing basketball in my 60s and 70s. Um, I wanted to be a professional speaker, to share my speeches and stories with others, and inspire them to believe in themselves while helping others, to travel the globe and see all the natural features while immersing myself in every culture to really understand the world. Um, And I was so curious too. I was honestly so excited to find out about the stuff I didn't yet know I was passionate about. Um, 
<laughs> a funny thing I really look forward to um, is when I'd be older and be a well-known senior member of my community. I wanted to be the old man that would show up to the same hole-in-the-wall restaurant every Tuesday for dinner and say, I get the usual. <laughs> and when I go for a walk, I'd have to stop every few houses and wave and say hi to each person in the neighborhood. <laughs> it sounds goofy, but I really was um, looking forward to that uh, later down the line. <laughs> okay. A little more difficult now. So, on May 1st, 2022, around 5 p.m., where were you headed? I was headed to a metro park to go on one of the hiking trails, just like on any other nice day out. And at 5.27 p.m., you were stopped by an officer. Yeah. I was driving down the road, same speed as all the other cars around me. Then an officer pulled up behind me and turned on their lights. I pulled over to the side of the road and stopped. I made sure to put my hands on the steering wheel and not to move around too much before she got out of her car. All that stuff they tell you when you're black. She got out of her car, came to my window with her gun already drawn and started yelling at me to raise my hands and don't move. I felt my body begin trembling when her voice sounded so unsure. Yet, she had all this power. I started sweating like crazy. My body was burning up, but my hands were completely cold and clammy. Facing straight ahead, and looking at her out the corner of my eye, I went to raise my hands, both empty. And at 5.31 p.m. And at 5.31 p.m., my life was ended by a stranger I had never even met before in my entire life. What are your thoughts on that? I never thought it could happen to me. I had placed so much faith in people and the human connection. I thought I could connect with them if they pulled me over. That I knew people so well I could calm them down. That they would see the humanity in my eyes and understand. But I wasn't even given a chance for any of that. And now, I'm gone. Do you think this was based on the color of your skin? I do. I didn't know her, and she didn't know me. I mean, obviously I didn't break a law that could label me as a dangerous person. And that's if I was even speeding in the first place. If we didn't know anything about each other, and have no violent history towards one another, why would she pull a gun on me before even asking me my name? All she had to judge me was my looks. And we know there's a history with white police killing black people. I mean, what else could I have done? I was literally just living like everyone else. And I got picked out from hundreds of cars on the road. And then shot. And not with one accidental bullet, but seven times while I'm strapped into my seatbelt in my car with no weapon what other beliefs should I or anyone else have on being intentionally murdered by someone I've never met before I am so sorry Matthew this is our last question for the evening. Due to your social justice work and voice at such a young age, do you think that this case, your story, will be the one that shocks the world's consciousness 
allowing justice to truly be served. Honestly, no. I really wish so, but I have very little hope for it. I do think I was a good person and didn't deserve it. But that's the same for all of us. Trayvon Martin, Oscar Grant, Tamir Rice, Breonna Taylor. So why would I be any different? We all had families, friends, futures, pasts, goods and bads. Just like you and everyone you love. And just as deep and complex lives as all of y'all too. But still, here I am. I tried to do so much good that if anyone thought I was dangerous, I'd have this resume to show them all I did. But that's not how it works. I wasn't judged by the content of my character. I was judged by a stranger with preconceived ideas of my intentions in history on the basis of my skin tone. All it took was their observation of ambiguous movements that seemed threatening. How is my story any different And why would the world change because of me when I'm just another Negro to the world? Just another hashtag. Just another hot topic of the week. Emmett was just as deserving of justice. Mike was just as deserving. Eric. Philando. Sandra. George, they all were just as deserving of justice as any other person in this country. So why would this country change their mind on their entire view of our people over me? Over just another dead nigger.